We're going to do an introduction to the Doppler effect. Like this, how's life treating you? <laughs> Hurts 24 7. So, what's the Doppler effect? This is an effect that happens that when an object is emitting either sound or light, if it's moving towards or away an observer, or if the observer is moving towards or away from the source, then there's going to be a change in what you observe, like the frequency is going to change. So this is really what happens with the Doppler effect. So it's change in frequency depending on movement, and it can be sound or light, it can be moving source, moving observer, no problem. But do remember, uh, we have our nice, lovely equation which is v equals f lambda. This one really comes to save the day with this, to understand what's going on. So let's look at uh, some examples here. So we have a moving source. This could be, for example, like let's say you are in uh, your car and you're moving to the right and you're emitting uh, sound, for example. The sound, you know, each time, you know, every second, let's say you're just emitting some new wave and then a new wave and new wave. Then these circles would be concentric and they'd be centered around the same place. The problem is, as you move, those circles and start somewhere, but the next one starts a little bit further. So that's why you end up, notice to the right side here, as you're moving to the right, these circles get sort of compressed on the front side. On the left side, they get, you know, stretched out. Now keep in mind, these are still perfect circles. At least I've tried to draw the same kind of circles. So it's just that the circles get sort of bunched up on the front and less bunched up on the back. Why do we care about this? Well, because these right here can be seen as like the wave fronts. So that means that we can say then this right here could be, we could draw that as the wavelength of light or the sound or whatever. Whereas here, this could also be seen as the wavelength. So do you notice then for an observer, if there's a source coming towards you, do you notice what happens then? The You're going to receive light or sound of a wavelength that is lower and remember, because of V equals F lambda, remember that equation, because uh, assuming that V is constant, that means that F and lambda will be inversely proportional, which means if lambda goes down, then F has to go up to keep the number the same. So because of that, then we can say, ah, that means you're going to receive then a higher frequency. So we'll say this, you receive you know, a signal that's like this, basically. So this right here is what's gonna happen. You're gonna receive something with a higher wavelength sorry, lower wavelength and a higher frequency. So that could be sound. So if it was a sound, that means the frequency is higher. That means we call that pitch. So it'll sort of sound higher pitched as someone's coming towards you. By contrast, if you're the observer and this thing goes away from you, for example, well, same idea, right? You've got these wavelengths right here that are stretched out. Remember the front one was compressed. So you're gonna be receiving values of wavelength that are stretched out. So that means what's, what's that? That means you're gonna receive well, wavelength is going to be bigger, and so that means your frequency will be lower. So just so you know, these this is sort of how we can deal with this, okay? So this is really important, sort of fundamental piece here, to have some kind of intuition as to what happens. Okay, so if we look at this, let's go a little bit deeper here. Moving observer, because we had the moving source here. But what if it's the observer that moves? Well, we don't need the diagrams. It's the same idea. So if the observer moves towards the source, well, that means you're going to be seeing values, you know, like let's say you're moving, this thing was still, and you're moving towards it. You're going to be seeing these compressed ones. So that means lambda is going to be down. Remember, because they're inversely proportional, that means the frequency will be up. And if you're moving away, it'll be the same thing except opposite. So that means lambda will be up. That means the frequency will be down. So that's sort of the idea behind all this. Okay, can we go any further? Of course we can. So let's just make sure we put it all together. So the difference between sound and light, I like this now just so we understand it here. So if sound is moving towards you, higher frequency. And again, that's because F is higher because lambda was lower. I'm just reinforcing it again. Here again, lambda was higher, so that means F is lower. And the way I remember for sound, I just think about Formula One. If you ever watch that, or like fast races, I love listening to <laughs> subtitles go zoom. But I just think about what happens really is that the sound is higher pitch as it coming towards you. As it goes down, it goes lower. So at the risk of sounding really stupid, listen, it goes, it's higher. And then after that, that's lower. Now in real life, if you ever seen like in a Formula One race, um, if you have the, like the in-car camera view or something like that, you'll hear the sound, like the pitch of the engine is actually constant. Let's just say it's like constant, like it's a constant sound. And yet you, the observer, like if you're standing beside it, let's say you're standing right over here watching all this happening, you really will be hearing the frequency of the sound sound higher as it's coming towards you. And after it passes you, it really will sound lower. It'll be noticeable. 
Now for light, just to make sure we go over this, so if it, let's say a star or a galaxy or something moves towards you, what happens? Of course you receive light of a lower wavelength. So what does that mean? Well that means it's bluer. You know the light would be you know, a lower wavelength, that means it would be bluer. We actually have a word for this, we call this blue shifted for a reason. Right, we call this blue shifted. So that means we might actually see stars appear bluer than they really are. And conversely, if a star is moving away from you, what's going to happen? Well, the wavelength is going to be higher. Larger wavelength, for example, a color that's got a, like, for example, blue, just so you know, it has like around 400 nanometers or so is blue. By contrast, maybe like 600 nanometers or so is red. It's not exact. I mean, it's close. Like 488 is a nice blue. 656, for example, is a nice red, something like that. But let's just say like 600-ish nanometers, just to have an idea. So that means that if it's got a higher wavelength, it goes redder. It's not necessarily fully red. It's just it's redder. It gets a higher wavelength. And we tend to call this red shift for a reason. Okay, so that means we have this term right here that we use. So we say it's red shifted light or it's a blue shifted light. That means if we're looking at a galaxy and we can see these um, these interactions or these, you know, uh, the light coming out has a particular pattern, for example, if we break it up into its constituent parts, we can see these effects and say, oh, this thing right here looks just like, uh, I don't know, excitation of sodium atoms or whatever. And you can say, oh, it looks just like it, except it's just been shifted uh, to a redder value. If it's redder value, ah, that means it's going away from you. Okay, let's take a look and see if we can make this make sense here. We've got an example here. So you're driving in your car and you're going at a constant speed. So let me just maybe try to draw. I'm really bad at drawing though, so I'll attempt to draw a car here. Let's say this here's your car. There you go. And you're emitting a sound. So you're emitting like a you know sound coming out here. You're honking. And your friend is just standing here, for example. Here we go, like this. What are they going to receive? So at time t equals one second, you pass your friend who's just standing still. What's going to happen with the frequency versus uh, time for the sound wave that your friend is going to observe? Well, if your frequency that you're emitting is called f0, let's just say, let's just say that's our frequency we're emitting. Well, then as it comes close to, as it's approaching you, remember what we said, as it approaches you, what happens? The wavelength goes smaller, therefore the frequency goes higher and as it goes away so they'll say towards like this and then if I say as it goes away what happens the opposite uh, wavelength gets bigger so that means frequency gets smaller so what really happens then is this centered around this so I'll maybe put like a dotted line here so this is what it wants to be well, of course, at uh, so before, as it's coming towards you, you've got a lower wavelength, which is a higher frequency. So it should be something above it. So maybe I'll put this line, like, I don't know, up here, maybe. It's supposed to be constant line. I'm just trying to draw a straight line. I'm just bad at it. Now what's going to happen is this. At some point, though, it's going to go down. It's not going to be sudden. So it'll be like, you know, maybe like this, and then it'll go down and constant again. So it's not supposed to be moving because you're not accelerating. You're going at a constant speed. So again, constant but higher frequency as it comes towards. Around one second, it's a constant but lower frequency. So this is sort of like like this. So this is this sort of sound. So when I think of Doppler effect, I seriously just think about this. I just think about a Formula One car driving past and going that explains everything I need to know. The pitch goes higher as it comes towards you, lower as it goes away. And there's a version of that, like I said, with light. So going away from you is uh, red shifted, going towards you is blue shifted.